What's up, family? Professor T's back with some more reacting to Undiscovered Music special episode. I'm going to react to myself, and I'll explain why I'm reacting to myself after we watch the video, because I don't want to be long-winded and lose you guys from you clicking off. So let's just get to the song, and I'll tell you about it after. So this song is I Know by myself, and it was a collaboration with Lanai, who I did her song, Walked in the Club. So this is a rap song here for her part. I produced everything. Nice. Where's the camera? I'm always looking off to the side, it feels like. You're right there. So I always look like I'm looking off to the side when I look at the screen. I guess it's because I kind of am. I'm looking over here to see the screen. The camera's over here. I'll keep that in mind. I'm getting distracted. So her rapping is pretty flawless here. When you rap, especially for all the ladies, all the female rappers, listen to her music and rap like that. That's how you rap. And this is the remastered version too, so everything is real crispy. And this is my part, the singing part. The remastered version I did all singing. My energy is a little low. I'm a little under the weather today, so you guys know. But I want to crank out a couple of videos to hold me over. By the way, I made the video too. You know me, uh, Matt Moran, aka Dur the Moranimal, aka Duran Moran. Uh, I think he's Duran. Is he? Mor I think he's the Moranimal on Instagram. So on Instagram at Moranimal. He, pr he uh, filmed the video and then I edited it. So he was directing and I edited the video. I haven't divulged too many details on the song yet. Like I said, I'm going to do that afterward because I cause there's, a, there's a specific point to why I'm reacting to myself right now. So there's the outro right here. That's so, new. Uh, this one, the reason why I'm reacting to myself, this is going with the introduction of the Music Made Simple series, which is going to be a tutorial series, me telling you guys how to make music. And the first part of that series is the songwriting workshop, which is featuring Anthony Casuccio and Shane Dupree, two professional musicians. When Anthony's a mastering engineer, Shane. He does a lot of different things, DJ, produce, and he's also a professional dancer. And he's organized a lot of like events that has to do with hip hop music. So both of them were talking about the future of music and popular music and um, songwriting. So something that I'll explain too. I'm going to do one of these reactions to my own songs for every episode. Now I want to explain the episode format for people who are still listening. So it's a little bit confusing, but what it is for the songwriting workshop, there's three episodes. Problem, because I'm long-winded, because Anthony's long-winded, because Shane's long-winded, each episode is super long. Like it would be probably like 45 minutes long each. You guys don't even want to listen to me talk and explain the song for 10 minutes on these. So I already knew that that wasn't going to work for me to upload the whole 45 minute long thing all at once. So as each episode is broken up into smaller chunks. So right now we're still on episode one. And um, right now parts one and two are uploaded. Part three will be ready in a few days. Um, definitely check out that series if you um, are interested. Please check that out. With my own music, I'm doing a comparison to the things that we were talking about. It's showing, do I practice what I preach? You know, like, does my music actually live up to the advice and tips that I'm giving on that series? And does it, li does it live up to the critiques that I provide on, you know, this channel, on uh, these videos as well? So what I know, I'm going to break that down with the points that we've made so far for episode one. 
started off with the instrumentation and kind of how that's changed over the years. Something that Anthony and I were discussing thanks to technology and also thanks to rap music in general, in uh, particular, I should say. A lot of the time, the song is going to be completely made up of, you know, electronic instruments and synthesizers and samples. So this song is like that too. This song, there was no acoustic instruments used on this particular one. I have songs I do use acoustic on, but this one was not one of them. This was all synthesizers, keyboards, drum samples. And then for the actual style of it with the vocal style, something else that was discussed in that series, how hip hop is kind of the driving force of the culture right now. So everything is being influenced by hip hop music. I don't care if it's rock, country, classical, jazz. You guys can think of so many classical like music that's in movie soundtracks that you can hear a hip hop influence. You'll be listening to a classical song and then all, out of nowhere comes in like a hip hop syncopated bass line or something. Or sometimes they'll just straight up put in samples and skittering hi-hats over classical music. That came as about thanks to sampling and turntablism. How when you chop up samples and you do things on a turntable, it gives you some very unique rhythms that you wouldn't otherwise think of. And with that, with the actual way that we sing now and the way that we have rap verses on everything, that comes across here. Like my singing parts, my verse, you can absolutely hear like the, the rhythms and things that are being used are definitely like a, a rap type of a rhythm that she would do even though it was singing vocals on it. That for Lanai's performance with rapping, like I said, she just crushed it. She knocked it out of the park. She's really great. And um, definitely I'm hoping that I can talk her to do some more music. We're gonna make that happen. So for that, the other things too that we talked about that I'll cover for relating this to that series of the tips I gave you guys for the creative process and songwriting process, the, kind of lyricism and the meaning of the song. What I usually say for that, songs can be timeless for a lot of different reasons. There's songs that don't even have words that are timeless. It's just that it was a melody, it was a bass line that was just so catchy, so simple and memorable. That plus two, just like, I think everything about this song is really catchy and the instrumental is really, um, is different. You know, like it, it's something that you don't hear every day the way that we did the instrumental. And um, what I would say about the lyricism of it that makes it relatable. She was on there talking about kind of love, me, someone, that you know, kind of falling in love. Then uh, my verse too is kind of this, a different angle of like the unrequited love, you know, kind of a different angle on that, like, some way you're not reciprocating, you know? So I think that kind of those are both two subject matters that it fits together with the song and then the lyricism of the hook, it ties it together. So I think that definitely the, if you listen to the lyricism, it definitely is coherent and it's something that I think everybody can relate to. And I think that's the reason why, even though we made this song quite a while ago, it still works, you know, five years later. And I still think that if this could get promoted a little bit better, even now this song could still catch on because it's really catchy. It has lyrics that people can relate to. And I think that, you know, it's, it's something that even years later from now, if her and I go back and listen to this, we'd be like, it was a great song. And, you know, even now, you know, we can still relate to that song. And then, of course, for the two people that made the song, of course, there's the experience of us being in the studio together working on it. You know, because this took us like several different sessions to get everything done. So, yeah, with this one, I definitely would say bio music going back and breaking this down. I feel comfortable giving other people tips because, you know, I think that I do hit the points that I would bring out. And then, you know, for the things that I would bring out too that I would critique people on, the biggest one is always vocal performance. Like I said, Lanai, her rapping. You can hear that it had energy. She did everything with inflections of her voice to make it not be flat, to actually have a little bit of emotion and make it 
the vocal performance go somewhere emotionally and sound genuine and real. She also, with the rhythm, is something that I'm always getting in the case of a lot of modern rappers, not just small rappers that we're reviewing, but even in the mainstream, like stuff by the baby and stuff like that. That I've heard. Like, I don't remember which songs. I don't really listen to rap. I just know it was that the baby was the rapper. It might have been Rockstar because I think that's the big song that he has out. He kind of did that. There was parts where he would start rapping really fast, but it wouldn't be accurate. You know, like it would just be a lot of words all shoved into one. But if you were to line it up and try to line this up to beats, it wouldn't really line up perfectly. There wasn't the accuracy. When with Nive raps, you hear that she has that accuracy to it when she's rapping. Like everything is very rhythmically intense. Everything lands on beat where it should land. My vocal performance on the singing, this way you could do a pretty good comparison if you um, heard the original before this was re-recorded and remastered in better quality. The original, this was years ago, so I didn't have the years of studying and taking lessons and all and practicing. So this is a huge improvement over the first time I did the singing. Like the singing, it definitely has some peaks and valleys in the volume. I definitely was rhythmically accurate on it. I definitely considered the phrasing on it. You can hear the phrasing, how there was um, certain words were shorter and more cut off and some words are more connected. And then the other thing that I say about phrasing too, to make that last word a little bit longer than you think you need to, and to carry your breath through the whole phrase. So I feel like when I listen to this back, I hear all those things. I could still use a little bit more work with pitch. I feel like it definitely was in key and it sounded good. But I feel like I could definitely continue to work on the pitch. The actual timbre of my voice, I think, sounds okay. But then again, I think usually when you're listening to your singing, a lot of times you could be your own harshest critic. So other people, they might think it's better than I think that it is. But yeah, I, I definitely feel like it hit all the points with the vocal performance. Then with the actual production of it and how the song is structured. This song, it definitely evolves quite a bit over time. Like if you listen, you hear that there's instruments that are added when it goes to the chorus and the drums get a lot different and kind of get busier and it explodes out when it gets to the chorus of the song. And then it kind of gets a little bit more laid back. Then when it gets to that outro of the song, everything gets stripped away and it kind of just brings in just a couple of elements at a time to be the outro of the song. You can hear the outro better if you guys listen to the audio only version that's posted on my channel. I'll leave a link to both down below. So, yeah, that's breaking down this song, and that's kind of that comparison I wanted to do for these. So, as I said, for the other two episodes in the um, songwriting workshop, as those come out over the coming weeks, I will do this again with other songs. So, probably for part two, what I'm likely going to look at for vocal performance, we're going to check out uh, Seen You Before. And then for part three, I'm not sure which song I'm going to do for that one yet. This part three is, is more about kind of the uh, final production and the promotion of it. So definitely stay tuned. Then I'll give some other quick updates. So now that anybody that actually really cares, which is probably nobody, you guys are still here. So some updates for the channel. I'm uh, transitioning over to a different computer. So I'm going to try to get a few um, reactions going today. But there's a potential that this week I might have to miss some. So you might not have a daily reaction upload this week. If that happens, I'm just going to simply double up once I have my new computer up and going. And uh, the second thing that I was going to announce about the reactions, I really am serious about bringing more light to female musicians. So this week, I'm going to make it about that. We're going to go in and find as many small, undiscovered female singers, players, producers, everything that I can to do this week. And I'm going to see if I could continue that throughout the month. I want to really put a highlight on female performers. So we're going to, so that's what's going to be the focus. You guys are going to notice. And hopefully I'll be able to live up to that. I'll be able to bring out as many female performers as I can for the rest of this month. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video now. I know this ran pretty long, but I had a lot of talking and a lot of breaking down to do so. With all that said, to Lanai, to Professor T, and all the Professor T fans in my hometown, 
love what you do. I had a great time giving you this information. I hope that you learned something from it too. And I spread nothing but peace and love to all of you. And I will see you in the next review.